Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Dr. Beth Westy Show. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about cortisol. Is my cortisol too high, is it too low? How does this work, right? So I'm gonna be talking about your cortisol response today. Now if you have other questions on this, don't hesitate to either drop a comment, send me a message, reach out to me. This can be a really tough topic to dive into because it's just, it's just a bear to deal with, right? It's a bear to deal with. Um, so I'm gonna go through some of these things here. Um, but first, before I really jump into this, I wanna make sure if you are not on the wait list for the next 12 week challenge, there you go, uh, right there in the comments, there is the link to get on the wait list. Um, registration only gets released to the wait list. So you wanna be on it. Registration um, is gonna be open December 18th and it usually fills in about 24 hours. So do not hesitate, get on that list. We're gonna be covering things like this in the 12 week challenge. We start in January, it's coming up, it's creeping up, ah, okay. So when we look at cortisol levels being too high or too low, oftentimes if you're feeling some of these things, I feel fatigued, I know I've had stress, 2020, right? Oh my gosh, right? Uh, my sleep is off, sometimes I sleep okay, but I don't feel rested or I'm interrupted in the middle of the night, I wake up and my brain won't shut off, you know, things like that. I've gained weight, I can't lose it, no matter what, you have that weight, weight less resistance. You're having sugar or carb cravings, you're also irritable, you can also have brain fog, right? Um, fatigue while working out, you know, bad recovery from that. There's so many more things that can happen, but these are a lot of the big things that women notice. Now, is this, does this mean you have high cortisol or low cortisol? And the real answer is yes, possibly. <laughs> How do we know? We know by testing, right? We know by testing, we have to see, right? Because the trouble is, is that if your levels are too high or too low, it feels the same. It feels the same for your body and your system. How can that be? That doesn't make sense. I know, I know, right? But oftentimes, right, there might be a few things where I'm like, hmm, you know what, uh, this type of issue you're having, this could be related to more high cortisol or these other things, this is definitely low. But a lot of times the general big things that you're noticing that you're struggling with, it really can be either one, high or low. Now, that's not great, right? That's not great, that's not fun. So what does this mean in terms of, you know, how to really work with this? It means that you really just have to have the right protocol moving forward and understand that your body's reaction and response is going to be different, right? There might be some things that you've done to help work on some of these things and be like, oh, yeah, but I, I've been working out really hard to try and lose weight. Okay, but if you have really low cortisol, you're actually tanking your cortisol more, right? If, if you've been, you know, um, cutting out carbs and your body is too high in cortisol, that actually increases that response. <sighs> That's not good. That's not good at all, right? That actually leads to more insulin resistance, things like that. <sighs> what? I know, I know. So again, these are things that we work with. These are things that we help your body function better so you feel better, right? The, the 12 week challenge and, and everything else that I really teach for women is really designed to let you learn more about your body physiology, how does your body work and function, then let's work with that, with your nutrition and everything else, so that you function better, feel better, and then are able to get to the right results. And again, remember, your health is cumulative. Your health is cumulative. That means that it matters. It matters your health history. It matters how much stress you've been under, especially recently. It makes a difference in how well your body can respond. And if you're not giving it the right, if you don't have the right tools or you're not giving it the right nutrients, it makes it harder, right? It's like trying to race against somebody except for they're on the side of a pool and you're in the water and you're trying to race from one end of the pool to the other. You gotta run in the water, you know? You can't swim, you're gonna run and they're gonna run on that. Who's gonna win, right? Ugh, right? That's how it can feel, right? That's how it can feel. So when we look at cortisol response and how this works, a couple of ways I explain it are, um, using car analogies. Now, I'm not an artist, clearly. <laughs> That's my car I drew. It's probably not safe to drive. Oh my God, the wheels aren't even even. <laughs> you guys aren't here for an art show though, are ya? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but analogies that I use are, you know, talking about how much cortisol your body can make and how much it uses, right? 
And one of the things that we measure for and look for is how much cortisol your body makes and stores and how much it actually uses. So one of the things that I'll describe is that we, and we look at and examine um, how much is stored in there. How much do you have available? So it's like having a gas can, right? That's a gas can, a gas can in your garage. How big is that gas can, right? Compared to the car I just drew, it's enormous. <laughs> That's not realistic. This is not to scale, okay. But how much, you know, do you have a big gas can, a little gas can, and then how much gas does it have in it, right? Is it full or is there just like a little bit of liquid here at the bottom? You don't really have much stored, right? Well, if you don't have much stored, if you are getting terrible mileage, if you are burning through the active cortisol that's in your body and your tissues, right? You're gonna have to try and draw it from somewhere. Where's your reserves? If you have higher levels here, right, and you get a lot of, you know, gas in the tank here, if this is the tank and you're like, oh, yep, this is the, that's a gas tank. I don't, I don't know. It looks like a fishbowl. But gas tank, if your levels are up here, but you burn through it really quick, I mean, it plummets. So this is you feel okay in the morning, and then all of a sudden at some point in the afternoon, you hit a wall, and you just can't keep going, right? Because your body burns through any amount that you've had, and then you don't have a backup. You don't have it stored. It's not there for you. You got no reserves to tap into. You're out of commission until the next day. I hear this from women all the time and they think, yeah, that, yeah, that happens to me, right? But it matters. It's important, right? If you are having this happen to you, your cortisol levels are off. They're unbalanced and you're not getting enough in the system when you need it, right? You're bottoming out. So essentially it's like coasting on fumes the rest of the day. You're not going to get very far. This leads to more fatigue. It messes up your sleep cycles. It can mess with your circadian rhythms. It can mess up any progress you're trying to make, you know, with your physical results. I know all these things, right? And you're thinking, of course I'm gonna be irritable. <laughs> I'm exhausted, yeah, right? But it also messes with your mood swings and it can interrupt with how well your cycle works and functions. This is a really big deal because oftentimes we're under stress and we manage to push through it, right? I can power through it, I can push through it, no big deal. I'm fine, I'll make it, sure, uh, but there's a repercussion there, right? It starts messing with your cycle, your hormones, throws that off. That leads to what? More weight gain, more weight loss resistance, more cravings, mm, fun, as well as some great PMS symptoms. <laughs> and then all these things are going on in your body and you have to start with all of it. That's a lot of work to do. It's a lot of work for your body to do. So targeting the right things is what helps you move forward, right? Addressing the right issues in your body is what helps you move forward. And this is what we do in the 12 week challenge. So again, Dr. Victoria and I, we can only work with so many women. That's why I want to make sure if you are not on the wait list, you're getting on the wait list because when registration opens, it will, it will close fairly quickly. Our, our wait list is, you know, I, I don't, I don't, shouldn't say full cause there's no limit to how many people can be on the wait list. But the higher the wait list is, the more people try and get in. And then sometimes, um, you know, we'd have to close, when, when the group is full, the group is full, and we'd have to close it down earlier, earlier than 24 hours. So that's the one thing if you're looking at this thinking, holy crap, this is me. Holy crap, yes, I feel like I coast on fumes the rest of the day. Or, you know, for some people, you might have opposite levels here. You have a ton here and none in the car, right? A ton in the gas can, but none in the car. You know, you might feel exhausted all morning and all of a sudden in the afternoon, you're like, I'm ready to party. And you could be up till 11 o'clock or midnight just doing all the things, right? That's, all not, that's also not a great pattern, right? It, so it doesn't have to be exactly like I described, but it means that these levels are higher or lower or it's not being transferred. You're not converting it. You're not actually getting it in the gas tank, right? <laughs> I chatted with somebody yesterday. I was like, yeah, it's like you got a bunch of gas in storage, you know, a gas can. But instead of putting it in the tank, it's like, oh, you just spilled it all over. <laughs> that's, not, that's not great. It's not doing anybody any good there. <laughs> not getting that conversion in. Right? So these are, these are specific things. When we see them, we target them. That's what leads to the amazing progress that women have in the 12-week. Yes. So that's what I got for you guys today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Please let me know if you, you know, need any other help, guidance, other, you know, if you want me to do a video on something, again, don't hesitate to reach out. A lot of the videos that I do, it's based off of questions that you have. Uh, I mean, my mission here is just to, you know, educate, inform women so you can make the best health choices for you with better information, right?
Um, other resources I have for you, I have a couple of books. The one is The Female Fat Solution. This is on Amazon. It talks about nutrition that matches your hormones and your cycle. I also do talk about cortisol levels in here. Other ne negative repercussions of cortisol. It's tougher to build muscle. Your body eats the muscle, stores more in fat, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then The Female Menopause Solution. Um, if your body's going through perimenopause or menopause, your response to cortisol is also completely different. That's fun. That's why I also have a 12 week challenge specifically for women in perimenopause and menopause. Yeah, because your body's totally different. That's what you need. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I also have a YouTube channel which is called Dr. Beth Westy and a podcast called The Female Health Solution. Um, and you can subscribe to those to stay updated on everything that I have coming out. So, all right, that's what I got for you guys today. Please let me know if you need anything else. Otherwise, if you found this helpful and you know somebody that could use this message, share it with them. The more we know, the better we can do. So, have a great rest of your day, and I will see you later.